Okay. Hey, hey everyone. Uh, welcome to another uh, session in our Neurodiversity Week. Uh, with us, we have Jay, uh, who is fearless and adaptive individual. And he's working with companies uh, to help them in business transformation uh, and digital transformation. Uh, today, he'll be sharing some of the practical tips uh, about neurodiversity for Agile team. So this is uh, very much aligned to the previous talk, which I facilitated, wherein we were talking about psychological safety and uh, neuroplasticity. So yeah, over to you, Jay. Thank you very much. Um, so I was thinking, um, I have a deck I can share and go through things. Uh, but I was thinking maybe we just have a conversation. So, um, so I'm neurodiverse. So I'm on the spectrum, autistic spectrum. And uh, they changed the name, but we used to be called people with Asperger's. Um, and now we're at high level uh, uh, autistic people as they rechange their diagnoses and, and how to do it. So um, I've worked with a lot of neurodivergent people over the years. So those who've been around for a long time probably know that um, many neurodivergent people uh, went into the profession of software engineering, coding and designing because that fit our personality at the time. This was, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And I've worked at many companies. I worked at IBM for 20 years. And uh, now I work for a company called Eli Lilly. But I've also worked for many of the software companies that are uh, famous out there, like Facebook, Google, Apple, and so forth. So we were very comfortable about the software engineering because back in the day, we were kind of left alone. We would go and, and, and code and design and test and talk to people every now and then. Uh, but we really uh, didn't have to participate and collaborate too much. Now with Scrum and Agile and everything, which is uh, the new way of working out there, uh, what we're asking the team to do is collaborate more, talk more amongst themselves. You know, individuals and interactions over process and tools, right? That's one of the values of the Agile Manifesto. However, for many neurodivergent people, that's an issue. That's a problem. We, uh, depending on where we're at on the spectrum, uh, uh, communicating, collaborating, and having conversations with individuals and people is a challenge. So some tips and tricks. Uh, first, I'll share what I had to learn and, and how I uh, adjusted and grown over the years. I think it was in my late 40s or so, I recognized that something flipped in my brain where I uh, understood people more and I liked people more and I became more of a social person. And I don't know what happened, but something happened. And before that, I was the opposite. So uh, my neurodivergent uh, aspect or Asperger's was that I was very, uh, intelligent and smart and I can look at big pictures and problems and connect the dots and and design things really well. However, I was not good with the social skills or what we call emotional intelligence today. Uh, and I was not good at uh, being around large numbers of people like so and so like for example, those who know scale agile framework, they have PI planning, 100 220 people. Yeah, no. I would not show up for that, right? It's too, it's too many people. I don't go to confer, uh, big conferences too much or, 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 or music. Uh, so, uh, and I also uh, did not uh, understand uh, emotions very well or the politics, office politics. And I did not know how to engage with people. So I went through a whole learning process. So I seeked out um, support groups. I seeked out knowledge of how to improve my emotional intelligence. And I practiced and practiced and practiced, right? Until I felt comfortable and I was okay at it. I was good at it. But I had to go through 
internally a, a change. And I'm not saying everyone needs to do that or wants to do that. That was just me. And, and I wanted to learn new ways of thinking because a lot of people with Asperger's, you know, we don't like our neurodivergent people, loud noises, loud uh, of sound or uh, uh, very bright uh, uh, light and, and uh, conflict, uh, very problematic. Um, so there's some tips and tricks that I had to learn myself to grow and, and be different. Although I argue that we're all different and there's no normal. Um, so I've also found out how to work with uh, individuals on teams and team of teams that are different and allowing those differences to shine and embrace them. So one tip, uh, I'll just list some. And, and if you have any questions or any chats, just put them in there and I'll, I'll answer the questions as, as soon as I list these tips. One tip is to, is to be open and observant and aware. So self-awareness is very important. Listening is very important. But knowing what to look for in your team members. If someone's very quiet and shy, has problems showing up, someone who uh, speaks uh, very slowly, you can also look at people's behaviorisms and, and, and look in their eyes and see if they're starting to feel uncomfortable. And, and you can sense that feeling of harm coming on to them. Then you probably need to talk to that individual on a one-to-one -one basis, right? Now, not everyone feels comfortable sharing this because uh, unfortunately, many, many organizations consider this a disability or a problem or not normal, right? Uh, I argue the exact opposite. The more neurodiverse people you have and the, and the more uh, inclusive inclusivity you have, the better off the whole company is in the team. You'll produce better, wonderful stuff, right? So one tip is to be aware and, and see how that individuals and members are, are acting in these kind of situations, these teaming situations. Second, um, make it personal and talk to individuals. Uh, be on a personal level. So what I do is I share myself. Now, not everyone feels comfortable doing that, but that kind of opens up the conversation and, and the discussion, and, and that makes people feel safe. So we talk about psychological safety, right? And, and, and that has to be uh, uh, kind of organically grown and, and taken care of. Uh, otherwise, it could dissipate rather quickly. The other tip I have is um, once you find out uh, where the person is on the spectrum, and, and there's uh, dyslexia, ADHD, there's there's many of these, you, you have to figure out with that individual how they feel comfortable working together. For example, I've had team members who uh, they felt comfortable going off and, and designing something by themselves, that divergent, convergent kind of uh, uh, process, and then bringing it back to the team and showing it to them that they felt more comfortable doing that. And then the idea is if you're doing anyone out there doing Agile or Scrum or Kanban, we, we said, okay, cool, there's a story or a feature for that person. So, so uh, Annette is going to go off and do that for the next rent or the next two sprints and bring it back, right? Because it's going to add value to what we need to get done. So that's a tip to allow people to be themselves, but allow them to go off and diverge from the rest of the team to create whatever they want to create. I've had some wonderful results by doing that with, with some very smart talented people. I think the other tip is to use your organization. Most organizations now have a DEI group, right? And, and, and that's cool. So use those groups. Uh, uh, many companies now are becoming very formal about that and, and very supportive. I can remember back in the day, many years ago, we didn't have DEI in companies, right? And we were kind of ignored and, and no one was there to help us. That's changed. Most big corporations now in the world have a team of people to help you as a leader, manager, and to help everyone else in the company. So take advantage of that. There's support. 
Next, go out to support groups. So if you know that you have neurodivergent people on your teams, there's just Google it. There's tons of now groups and organizations you can go to to learn more, right? And 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 they'll share with you how some tips and tricks, right, on, on, on how to uh, work with individuals uh, that uh, uh, need extra care, right? So those are my my tips. Uh, so what's DEI? That's diversity, equality, and inclusion. So uh, so diversity is a big thing, right? Equality is a big thing. And inclusion. So bringing neurodiverse people in is part of diversity, but it's all part of the inclusion aspects of everything. So now I'm gonna, I'd like to open it up for questions and, and sharing. If anyone wants to share uh, any of their experiences or, or tips and tricks or any questions. A uh, lot of uh, great points here, Jay, and it's it's kind of a eye opener for me as well, uh, because when we talk about creativity, innovation, uh, it differs from people to people, right? So I am also working as a scrum master, leading two teams, but I never thought uh, in terms of uh, what do you say, um, neurodiversity. Like whatever um, uh, activities, experiments I'm doing, uh, that time I I just tend to think that, okay, everybody is equal. And forget the aspect that everybody is unique. They have their strength. They have their weaknesses. So it's very important to be aware, right? So uh, with that, I wanted to know from you, uh, Jay, like, how, how do I know that someone is different and they need a different, uh, I mean, see, as you said, that there are people who might not feel like, be comfortable in talking, right? But when we go in a retrospective meeting, we might want those people to speak up, right? And we being biased, we might think that, okay, this person is purposely not sharing anything. He's not considering himself as a part of the group. But maybe he's having some other challenge because of which he's not able to speak. Yeah, and that's important because, look, uh, the Agile Manifesto, uh, uh, most of the frameworks out there, Scrum and Kanban and all the others, there's like 50 of them now out there, they all want people to communicate more and collaborate more, right, and mm -hmm. speak up. Right. What I'm saying is, no, <laughs> we can't. That's a bias of ours. And we, we, we read this saying Scrum and Agile, and this is what everyone should do. But we're not taking into account the differences of organic brain structure and neurodiverse people. They can't do it. Not only can they not do it, if you force them to do it, you are causing them harm. Mm. And you are causing them injury. So what we've got to do is step back and 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 see our the people we work with and see if any of them are on the spectrum, right? Or any other uh, uh, problems they may have, emotional issues, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to deal with them on a human plane level. Right. And ask them. And, and but you have to build that trust. So you talk about psychological safety and everything, Lissoni's trust model and everything. It's very important because at, at the end of the day, when it says individuals and actions over process tools, that means that you are on the same plane as the person you're talking to. And that person will then eventually trust you and say, look. I have Asperger's, or look, I have ADHD, and here's what that means for me. I can't do this, but I can do that. I can't do this, but I can do that. Then now the team can start working together and say, okay, well, Bill, all right, you're, you, I know you, you have some attention deficit disorder, and you're going to stay, but here, here's a good set of work you could do. So it's so, so discovery work or a spike. 
you know, you're going to get really focused in that and, and then get some of that work done for the next, you know, two weeks or three weeks. And that shortens uh, and allows that person to focus, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's the way I would look at it. And I hate to say this, but scrum masters, I always say this, scrum masters are part psychologists, part anthropologists, mm -hmm. and part project managers. And that's a hard, that's a very difficult mix of skills and talent that you have to be really good at, right? So what I'm talking about is the psychological aspects of this and really understanding the human psychology. And it's hard, okay? It's, it's very difficult. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jay, that, that answers my question. And yeah, uh, so this was just for 15 minutes. So yeah, we are well within the time. Uh, thank you for all those uh, useful tips, and we'll we'll try to incorporate those in our day-to-day -day activities. Uh, thank you, Jay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I'll be at the conference in November, and I'm going to go even more detail on how we do this and, and how we do agile transformations. Okay. Yeah, we we are looking forward for your session. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye bye.